I'm not in the mood, newcomer. If you want to talk, see Anna. She's in charge here. Take a fish? Much. Fresh fish? Take as much as you need. It won't cost you a penny. Don't be shy. We have enough for everyone. I've heard that I can find an organization hereabouts that goes by the name of the EOD. Am I in the right place? You sure are. I happen to be a representative of the EOD. Pleased to meet you. My name's Anna. Can I help you with something? Uh, Charles Reed. Just a few questions, if I may. <laughs> of course. Ask away, Charlie. What is the EOD? I mean, what, what do you do as an organization? Well, we are a non-profit charitable organization. <laughs> Actually, it's better to say that we're a gathering of volunteers. We're not an official charity yet. As for what we do, we try to help ease the suffering in our city as much as we can. Oh. How do you do that? We provide fish for the hungry and fix the homes of the poor. We also patrol the streets at night to keep the wild beasts and bandits at bay. And many, many more things. Whatever needs doing. Anything to help the people, Charlie. It's been great chatting with you, but I'm actually here to speak with the EOD leadership. You know where I can find them? <laughs> Not so fast, Charlie. Nobody meets the top brass without being a member. You need to earn a rank in the EOD first. Oh, you're kidding me. What for? <laughs> you need to prove yourself. Show us through your actions that you're worth our time. No offense, Charlie. How can I join? That all depends on what skills you can offer us. 
What do you do best? Huh. Well, I'm afraid my resume's in my other jacket. Let me see. I was in the Navy during the war, and ever since it ended, I've been a private eye. <sighs> the sea provides. Turns out we have a job that's a perfect fit for you. Okay. Tell me more about this job. Well, last night someone tried to break into our fish storage room. Luckily, the guards scared him off, but I fear they'll be back to finish the job. That's why we've been busy today giving away all the fish to the people. We'd rather it get into the hands of the needy than to some thief. And you want me to find whoever this thief is, right? <laughs> You're smart, Charlie. I like it. Exactly. Fine. Count me in. Good. Thank you. Here's the address. Tell the guard the password, I serve the C, and he'll let you into the storeroom. See you later. I serve the sea. Anna sent me here to investigate the recent break-in. I <sighs> see be praised. Finally. I'm Daryl. Daryl Grimes. How can I help you? Can you tell me what happened? And don't skimp on the details. <sighs> Not much to tell, sadly. It was a man that much I know. He snuck in while I was upstairs, tried to steal the fishies, but I heard him. Nearly got him with a harpoon by Kay, but I missed in the dark. He got away, that Dane. But I wonder, why steal what you can get for free? Yeah, that's a bit of a puzzler. 
What did this burglar look like? Same height as you. Not too big, not too small. Nothing to write home about. An average Joe. If not for his, uh, bald head. That guy was as bald as an egg. I could see the moonlight reflecting off the top of his head. What did he steal? Nothing. I scared him off before he could. Where did he go after that? Don't know, pal. He was way faster than me. What's the deal with the, the password and such? Orders from the higher-ups. I don't get to ask why. All right. Well, that's enough for now, Mr. Grimes. I've got to go to work. Here, take the key. May the sea bless you. Wow. It pierced a good inch of solid wood like it was nothing. The hall's fresh, still smells of the sea. No signs of decomposition at all. That's a fancy looking bottle. Looks like it was taken from a lab somewhere. And there's some kind of powder left on the bottom. I better not touch it. It could be dangerous. This guy must really be into his hobby to have such impressive tools. Nice work. When I was a kid, I would have gone nuts for this. Well, if it was finished, that is. This guy must really be into his hobby to have such impressive tools. Things dead as a doornail, but I don't see any wounds.
I have questions. I found a hidden room full of shackles and chains downstairs. Looks like some kind of torture chamber. Know anything about it? What? Stop talking, truck. That can't be true. I know this place top to bottom. Now, Daryl, you know I'm a detective. And if you're lying, I'm going to find out one way or another. I've got nothing to do with it, I swear, Mr. Reed. Go ask Anna. She's responsible for renting the place. I know nothing about this. Okay. I'll talk to Anna. We'll see if your story holds up. See ya. May the sea protect you. Pierced a good inch of solid wood like it was nothing. So first it ate the fish, and now it's dead. That's troubling.
fair to be afraid. Titanic forces are at work, infinitely greater than ourselves. Unknowable, incomprehensible. There will be sacrifice. There will be loss. There will be darkness. But these are the hallmarks of a pivotal moment in time. And each of us has a part to play. Interesting speech. You really think there's an upside to all this? Absolutely. The darker the day, the brighter we can all shine. And we will all shine again soon. All that's needed is faith. I am called Ebernote Blackwood, and this is the place I have chosen to share my message. Please, come to one of my full sermons. Ah, uh, Charles Reed. Good to meet you. Blackwood, you're a member of the Grand Family. I am indeed the last of that line. Inheritor of an empty mansion and a severed history. I'll see you around. Take as much as you need. It won't cost you a penny. Fish? Fresh fish? I've found what looks suspiciously like a dungeon in the basement of your fish storage. Care to explain? Excuse me? You've found what? A dungeon. Chains, shackles, and blood. Ring any bells? Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds awful. We, we only started renting the place a few weeks ago. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to ask our landlord several uncomfortable questions, it seems. Thanks for the heads up, Charlie. See you later.
extra, extra. All the news that's fit to print. Uh, hello? Hello. Welcome to Oakmont University Library. Joy Hayden, can I help? Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. I apologize for my bluntness, but can I ask you a question? Mouth? Yeah. Punishment. Long story. Again, sorry for me being so direct, but that can't be legal, can it? This looks like... It looks like torture. Legal in Oakmont. Local custom. Huh. I need to see your book catalogs. Sure. Over there. And that's it? No payment, no threatening, no favors in return? No. Library public. Knowledge for everyone. Welcome. Well, that's music to my, uh... Eyes? This city doesn't look like it has much need for books, except as fuel for fires. How come the library is in such good shape? Mr. Throgmorton. Funds. Keeps everything in check. Really? Huh. I wouldn't have thought that of him. I wonder why. He says people need hope, entertainment, escapism. Now more than ever, can't imagine library without his help. Bye, Joy.
by. The sea protects. The hall's fresh, still smells of the sea. No signs of decomposition at all. Come back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. Just a little bit more. Professor Westerbrook never learns about this. about this. Just a little bit more. Oh no. Darn pests. May I take them. Come back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. A man broke into the fish storage, poisoned the fish with an unknown substance, and then made a noise which alerted the guard, who chased him out. You dig up anything interesting? I sure did. Turns out our friend here wasn't here to rob the place. He came to poison the fish. By the sea. Are you sure? Well, that's what the evidence suggests, anyway. Okay, this is horrible. Please don't tell Anna it was my fault, or she'll have me courted. Anna will quarter you. You're joking about that, right? Wish I was. 
Anna, she's ruthless when it comes to punishing the guilty, EOD member or not. That's unexpected. Huh. Don't worry, I won't tell her. You seem like a decent sort, Daryl. I'll, uh, I'll make something up. Thanks, Mr. Reed. Here's a little something to express my gratitude. Take care now. Still, I've done wrong and I deserve to be punished. I'll stay on guard duty for the next month without a day off. You have my word. All right, you, uh, you go ahead and do what you gotta do, I guess. See ya. May the sea protect you.
Don't do that again. Bothering me, newcomer. Do you still want that interview? I, uh, I got some time now, if you're ready. Oh, absolutely. We know that you're the private eye who solved the case, but tell our reader something more about yourself. I'm a former Navy diver. Served on the USS Cyclops, and well, after the war, I found myself in Boston. I've been a private eye ever since.
Oh, a brave sailor. Well, I imagine you'll get accustomed to local life easily. We have plenty of water around here. Uh, maybe we'll have the chance to work together later. <laughs> Who knows? And now the big question. Why are you here? What brought you to Oakmont? Currently, I'm tracking down the source of the psychic phenomenon that's been causing madness and visions all across the country. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it affected people here, but we were much more concerned with the Flood. Though Robert Throgmorton sent an expedition. Yeah, and then hired me to find it. Ironic, don't you think? I think that's enough for now. I <laughs> can't give the readers too much all at once. Thank you for your interview. Mr. Reed? My pleasure. And um, maybe I'll do something interesting enough to make the papers again. You never know. See you later. something you like. Fresh fish? Take as much as you need. It won't I've got news about your fish storage problem. Oh, I'm all ears, Charlie. It only looked like a robbery. Some guy broke into the storage to poison the fish. Near as I can tell, he succeeded, at least partially. I realize it's a lot to take on faith. Look, I've got a sample of what I think is the poison. Oh, I can't identify it yet. <sighs> See, protect us. That's terrible. Wh what kind of man would do such a thing, and why? I don't know. But I aim to find out. We need to stop distributing the fish. We have to let everyone know about this. Kay knows how many people might already be affected. Any theories on who might have done this? Any... enemies? <laughs> the EOD has a lot of enemies. Wicked people that want to burn this city or drown it in blood. It could be anyone. It could be the police, the Ku Klux Klan, see, take them. Or even the Throgmortons. We were always a thorn in the side of those apes. What do you want me to do with the Poisoner once I find him? I'd bring an end to him right there if I were you. The police and court are useless these days. That wasn't the deal. I'm a detective, not a hitman. Fair enough. Fair enough. Report to me when you find him. I'll see that the reward will be more than handsome. If you know what I mean. I'll, uh, see what I can do. One thing still bothers me. The guard at the storage, Daryl. What was he doing at the time? Your guard was vigilant. He fought bravely, but the poisoner knocked him out. You ask me, he deserves a raise. Good old dependable Daryl. I hope he's okay. I'll see he gets his due. Goodbye, Charlie. 
Now, refresh my memory. Where's, uh, where's the university here? I know it very well. Here, give me your map and I'll show you. You were a student there, I take it? Yes, that's right. I earned my degree there a while ago. Are you surprised? I just wasn't expecting to see a college graduate working here is all. I never had the opportunity myself. I could say I'm a bit jealous. You'll find that here in Oakmont, a woman can achieve much more than on the mainland. Our university has always accepted women with open arms. See you later. All the news that's fit to print. Best stuff in Oakmont. All on sale. Today all the news that's fit to print. Welcome to, to the University of Oakmont. <laughs> How can I help you? You recognize this bottle? You know where it comes from? It, 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 sorry. <laughs> we have hundreds of b bottles like this in the university. Uh, fine. I need to know what's in it. Any suggestions? 
Ah, uh, you need an, an analysis. Well, I'm sure someone from the Department of Medicine c can help there. I'm looking for Professor Westerbrook. You know where I can find him? You're, you're, you're the one bringing him the specimen? Uh, specimen? Oh, oh n never mind. Uh, he, he's in the d Department of Medicine. Let, let, let me show you. You have a good day. G g goodbye, sir. Hello, sir. Welcome to Oldmont University Department of Medicine. I'm Samuel. Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. I have a few questions, if you don't mind. You recognize this bottle? Maybe you could tell me what's inside. Hmm. That's one of our lab bottles. We have a lot of them. As for what's inside, I'd need to run some tests. Yeah, could you do that for me? These tests aren't cheap. And the other day, I could get right to it, but we're, uh, somewhat hindered right now. What's up? Our lab is crawling with, well, creatures. Professor Westerbrook's research is a little unconventional, and something went wrong. Really wrong. So, if I do a little pest control for you, you'll run those tests for me. For free? Our budget is tight. You'd be helping the cause of science, Mr. Reed. Isn't that enough? Oh, I guess science could help itself. All right. Yes, you solve all problem, and I'll run the test for you. Off the books. Here's the key for the basement.
Some serious equipment they've got here. Oakmont University is clearly well funded. I'm glad this thing is dead. Why do they even keep it here? Your lab is certified creature-free. Excellent, Mr. Reed. You've done us a great favor. Now we can get things up and running again. Your lab was, uh, interesting. Running experiments on those creatures, what's up with that? Oh, they're fascinating, aren't they? Convincing evidence of new branches in the evolutionary tree. Can you blame us for taking an interest? Maybe not. But so much dead flesh down there, that's going to attract scavengers. Didn't you think about that? Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> well, be more careful in the future. Your point's taken. Okay. I've done my part. Here's the bottle. Now you run those tests. Uh, yes. Wait here. It shouldn't take long. we finished that analysis, sir. It's, well, it's ricin. Ricin? A highly toxic poison extracted from castor beans. It's slow-acting, but absolutely fatal to humans. So, where do you get ricin? This isn't something you can pick up from a drugstore. Ah, uh, about that. It is rare, but we have a certain amount of it here. For study, in our poison store. Or we did. I'm afraid that must be where it came from. The label had been tampered with, but it certainly looks like ours. Where did you find it? Ah, crime scene. Someone was trying to poison a bunch of fish with it. This is horrible. I need to warn everyone in the university about this. Who's got access to where the poison's stored? Only Professor Westerbrook has the key. His office is upstairs, right alongside Professor Cavendish's. Professor Westerbrook's not here, though. He's been sick for the last few days. Professor Cavendish is away as well, on vacation. Where do they live? I'm not sure, but probably somewhere in Advent. Most of the teaching staff live there. Wait, you don't think it was one of them? I'm working on that. Can you let me upstairs? I... well... All right. This is serious. I'll help you. Here's the key. But please don't disturb the professor's things. I'd like to know a bit more about your professors. What do you want to know? I want to know more about Westerbrook. He's the head of our department. He's been here for, well, at least 30 years. He's one of the longest serving staff we have. As you've already seen, he's particularly interested in the wild beast that recently appeared in our city. Yeah, that's quite the unique fauna you have there. I've no idea how he did it, but Mr. Throgmorton's men brought him live specimens for his research. He thinks he's on the verge of a breakthrough in evolutionary theory. A secret that once revealed will benefit all humankind. <sighs> Some secret should stay buried. Six feet under. 
You're not a man of science, are you? It's not about why. It's about what if. What can you tell me about Professor Cavendish? He's one of the most brilliant teachers we have here. A PhD at only 25. Just imagine. His biochemistry studies are second to none. Worthy of a Nobel Prize. If he could complete his work. What's his problem? I don't know. There's some kind of family trouble. It's made him standoffish and irritable, and easily distracted. I hope he gets through whatever he's going through. We need his talent, especially in these dark times. I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.